Hi, everybody. Blue eyes. I was always fascinated by the blue eyes staring back at me in the mirror, partly because I didn't know very many people with blue eyes, not my mother, not my father. Always the question, why? And more importantly, how? This question sparked a curiosity in me, which led to a passion in genetics and led me here to genetic counseling. The technical answer, by the way, blue eyes are a recessive trait as opposed to dominant. So my parents may have been carriers hidden for generations until chance brought them together in me, like a game of dice. But uh, the story would be equally interesting if it were the postman, right, Ma? <laughs> but what if it wasn't blue eyes that was hidden? What if it was something more sinister? That is what I do as a genetic counsellor. I aim to guide and navigate families through the odyssey that is discovery of a genetic trait within a family. And it, it has different implications for different people because, after all, would you want to know that information about yourself? Okay, let's take a step back, talk a bit about genetics. So every cell in our body contains vital information in the form of DNA. This collection of DNA is known as our genome. If you think about the genome as an instruction manual, uh, it tells our body how to function on a day-to-day -day basis. It determines things like eye color, hair color, how our heart pumps blood, how our muscles contract. If you open this manual, you'll find a lot of chapters, about 25,000 chapters to be precise, and every chapter is a gene. We've got two copies of every gene, one we inherit from the egg and one from the sperm. Back in 2003, after a decade of hard work by scientists in laboratories the size of warehouses and billions of dollars, the first human genome was sequenced. What this means is that our DNA was deciphered letter by letter. You can see in Euston, London, a towering bookcase, which is our genome. It's 109 large white books, all about 1,000 pages long, and within those books, three billion tiny, tightly packed letters. That is our instruction manual. That is our invisible signature. And of all those pages, about 500 of them are unique to yourselves, 0.1%. The rest, identical to everybody else. But we know how important those 500 pages are. All you need to do, really, is look around the room. This data in tiny, tightly packed letters is really powerful. But doesn't really mean anything. It really needs to be interpreted correctly. And that's where the science comes in. Our DNA can now be compared to that very first human genome and many others that have come after it to identify changes that may signify important stuff for us. So something like the normal variation, like our eye color, something like adverse reactions to medicine or diet, a predisposition to high cholesterol or cancer, or a trigger to a genetic condition. All this is so important. You can find everything out from your ge genome. You can find out how much earwax you produce on a daily basis, something so trivial, yet also something as devastating as a childhood genetic condition. So although you could, if you wanted to, order a genome sequence for a family member or a loved one, you'd understand why it's not on my Christmas wish list this year. In 2013, Angelina Jolie announced to the world that she was having risk-reducing mastectomy. She was surgically removing her breasts due to a genetic alteration identified in her family. In 2015, she then talked about removing her ovaries and fallopian tubes due to the exact same genetic alteration. This made her up to 90% more likely to develop breast cancer than, than people in the general population and about 20 to 30% more likely to develop ovarian cancer. This gene is called BRCA1. Her mother had BRCA1, a genetic change in that gene, and she died of ovarian cancer. Jolie was tested for this and famously made the decisions that she made. She famously said she now can rest knowing that her children will never have to say, my mother died of ovarian cancer. You, most people can understand the motivation for wanting to know that information. People are motivated by change. When somebody with cancer is diagnosed and identified to have a genetic condition, their family members can get testing to assess whether they are at risk. In the UK, this means access to extra screening, life-saving life -saving surgery, and medication. 
For couples who have seen loved ones suffer because of debilitating genetic conditions in the family, they can be armed with the recurrence risks and statistics and plan their family with the right information. With this science comes psychology. You can't, you can't just look at it from one side of things. Knowledge is power is a lot of phrases that I hear in clinic. People want to know this information because it can help them make life-changing choices. But for other people, the answers that the genetic information provides comes with more as yet unanswerable questions. For some people, genetic information is dripping with anxiety, uncertainty, and the responsibility to share that information. Blame and guilt, massive psychological triggers to disinformation, how to share that with your relatives, what it means to them and the choices that they will make. Of course, we can't choose what of those 500 pages we pass on to our children, but, but that in itself doesn't change the psychology. And that's why it's important as a genetic counselor to use the experience of those families who have come before to give couples and families the space to make a decision that's right for them at that time. Because after all, today is tomorrow's hindsight. Genetic counselling has been happening for many years, way before genetic testing was as common as it is now. In 1987, a study was carried out by people affected with Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a debilitating, devastating condition that affects the mind, the body, and the person's personality. It has an onset of about 40 years of age, and after a decade, a person is almost completely deteriorated. You can understand why it was important to try and understand if a gene was discovered, if a genetic test was made available, would family members and people affected with the condition want to do that test? In the study, 96% of people said, yes, the test should be available. Nowadays in clinic, we see less than 40% of those family members. When it became very real, very tangible, people weren't quite so sure. It's one thing if you can find out something about a predisposition to cancer, where you can have access to life-changing surgery or medication. But what if you find out something that there's nothing you can do about it? Something incurable, something fatal. And this is the case with Huntington's disease at the moment. However, I always think about this 18-year-old chap who came to me for testing for Huntington's disease. His mother had Huntington's disease, so he was about 50% um, likely to inherit Huntington's disease. The reason he wanted to know at such a young age was for him obvious. He was about to undertake a course in university. His dream was to be an electrical engineer. His lived experience with his mother showed him that if he did inherit Huntington's disease, he would never become an electrical engineer. And so he would opt to choose something different at university, or better yet, travel the world. And this is why it's so important for a person to go through a genetic counseling space to really discuss whether that's information they want to reveal about themselves. Because genetic information is something that you cannot take back. It's a new level of medical information. And at the moment, we can't alter that gene or switch off that gene. But coming soon is gene therapy. And actually, with Huntington's disease, we now see more clients, more patients coming to us for testing because there's a new, g new drug on the horizon that uh, means that the symptoms of Huntington's disease will be less and the onset will be much later. And that's the beauty about genetics. It's a constantly changing field. And the research really provides hope. We're learning more and more every day. As a family, a decision about finding out about genetics in your family is multifaceted. Knowing about genetic risk or genetic information means that families need to have time to think about their own base beliefs, their narrative, and their family's narrative. As genetic counselors, we give people that space, that time, and we've obviously been skilled to adapt the information for their knowledge. And this is so important because things change and we want people in the future to say, looking back at the time, I made the right decision with the guidance of a genetic counselor. Yesterday was Genetic Counselor Awareness Day. And today I hope I've sparked some of your curiosities to want to ask questions and to really think about, would you really want to know this information? Thank you very much.